everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. I'm going to walk you through a really interesting example here around Pareto charts. Like, how do you create a Pareto chart? Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to, we're going to really dive into some uh, DAX formulas and DAX formula combinations, right? We're going to have to use a combination of formulas to be able to, to generate this. And so basically what we're trying to do, if I just turn this into a visualization, is we want to create a line that shows us the percentage of this amount of the total right as we go as we go out through and, and this is going to go from from zero percent all the way up to um to one 100 percent okay and so there's a little bit we've got to do here now i always recommend to turn this into a table right because you've got to you've got to really think about um like what sort of numbers do we need to be able to generate this particular result, right? If you think about what we need to do, we need to somehow divide, we need to first of all create a cumulative total of this amount, right? And you've got to remember there's no dates, there's no numbers, there's nothing, right? So we need to, this is an interesting way of how to just generate a cumulative total based on say a text value. Uh, but we need to generate a cumulative total of this amount as we go down this list um, and we need to divide that cumulative total by this total amount here, right? So somehow we need to get those amounts into our table here, okay? So we're going to do that step by step, okay? So I'm going to first of all call this cumulative, and then I'm going to, we're going to aggregate it all up into one measure. Cumulative total, um, no, um, no dates, right? Um, so to do this one, I'm going to show you a little bit of a technique here. We're going to use some X. We're going to use an iterator. Then within that iterator, we're going to go filter. Okay, we're going to go filter. And then within the filter, we're going to we're going to create a virtual another virtual table called summarize. Okay. Then I'm going to go all selected dates. Actually, not all selected dates. All selected sales. Okay, because I want to look at all of the sales in the selected context because you've got to remember we've got some date context that I would look at all sales from the beginning of time then I'm going to input my state code which is what is inside the table okay so this is basically creating a table exactly like this but virtually right it's creating this table virtually okay then I'm going to create another column because we, currently we've only got this column in our virtual table. So I'm going to call this one. I'm going to call this, we'll just call it revenue, I think. Right. Then I'm going to go and add my, um, have I got that right? Don't need that there. I'm going to put my total revenue there. Okay. So this virtual table here now that has summarized is now creating this exact table here. Okay. But because it's within filter, we're going to, at every single row here, iterate through every part of this particular table, okay, right? Because that we need to somehow manipulate this table virtually to create a cumulative total all the way down, okay? So then I'm going to go, if the revenue is greater than or equal to the um, state, state revenue, total revenue, Actually, we need to do one other thing I just forgot. Um, then I want to equal to revenue. Okay. I'm going to go enter. This is, I don't believe we're going to create this, the correct result. We need to do one other thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. What we need to do here is that this particular revenue, we need to evaluate this before it, it, it is evaluated within the formula. Okay. So I'm going to call this, I'm just going to call this state rev. rev and I'm going to put total revenue here because what happens in variables is that these calculations are evaluated before anything is done within this particular formula okay and we basically want a constant value for this one okay I'll just set it up and then we'll go into it short in a second okay check this out check this out so we now have a cumulative total even though there's really no way that we could rank, we haven't ranked them, there's no dates, there's no numbers or anything. We've just created a cumulative total based on text, a text column basically, okay, or from highest to lowest, okay. And so what, what we needed to do was within, so SumX is an iterator, right? Well, we want to iterate through a table. So we want to iterate through a table 
um, that is being derived from filter. But within filter, we're putting another virtual table um, where we're getting a list of all of our different states and all of their revenue. Okay, so for every single row in our table, we're going to iterate through every single row in this virtual table. We're going to iterate through every single state, and we're going to evaluate: is it the state revenue at any particular row? Is it greater than or equal to? the current revenue, so the actual revenue on that day, right? And then if it is, we're going to calculate up that revenue. And that's how we create the cumulative total. That's how we create the cumulative total, right? As we move down this list, we create the cumulative total because they're all evaluating to true. And then we're just aggregating this on top of this, this on top of this, this on top of this, etc, etc. Okay, so now that we've got this, right? Now that we've got this, then we basically just need to find a way to get this up into every single row. And this isn't too difficult, right? This is not too difficult at all. We just need to go new measure and we need to go, we could call it like all sales, something like that. And then just go calculate total revenue because we still want to calculate revenue, right? Um, and we're going to go all selected sales here. So that's, so it is going to still work within the context of our calculation, right? So I could drag that in like so. And now we have the all sales. So this is dragged up to here. So now from here, it's not too difficult, right? We just need to go this divided by this. But one also great thing about this particular calculation is it's totally dynamic, the way we've built it, right? We're going to create a Pareto chart dynamically based on any selection that we might make in our model. It's all going to hold as we click through, right? Okay, so what I would probably do here is I would bring this all together in one formula, I think. That's what I would do, right? So it's not too far removed from this particular form here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to paste it into a new measure. Right? I'll just create it and then I'll copy it from there. Okay, and then I'll go Pareto, I'll call this Pareto Charts States. Okay, and then I'm going to add here, so I'm going to go, I'm going to call this All Sales here, and this is where I'm going to put in that additional logic for the all sales because because we don't really need these intermediary calcs we can we can quite comfortably place them into one formula if we if we utilize good techniques around variables etc and so i'm just going to add it here and then what i can do here right is then i can go divide like so come down here and then put my all sales down here just put zero as the alternative result and then go enter. And I don't get too carried away with how I format my you know, formulas, etc. You'll see here I've got some simple indentation. To me, this is pretty easy to read, right? And then I bring this into my visualization here. And you can see it's currently, um, we need to change this into a percentage. So I'll just do that. This is why it's so key to have it inside and when you when you have this to, to have it inside a table so you can actually see the results right and you can see this is our Pareto chart being created so then what I can do is I can get rid of these here I can change the visualization up and I can put this in the line and you'll see that it's actually created the other axes for me um, just like that and then I can have say nothing selected or I can have um, yeah, I can select anything in my model. And then we could add more flavor to this particular um, visualization as well. What I could do is maybe add some data labels. I mean, that's a bit overkill really, um, but you can have a play around with what works and what doesn't, um, you know, just by utilizing the, the, the formatting area there. But hopefully you like that one. It's a, good, it's a good example, right? It's a good example of, of formula combinations getting pretty advanced. You could understand quite a bit there but it's so doable. Variables really help out here, okay? 
it's 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 key to use variables when 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 it's required right and and understanding when to get the evaluation done at the start of the formula versus and then inputting that value into a, say an iteration an iterating function have, um, you're breaking that down and understanding when to do that is is really really important this is a a, a good example of, of of when we had to choose a um, a variable over placing the the measure directly into the um, the context which is being generated within the function itself. Okay, let's wrap things up. Hopefully, hopefully you've got some use for this. You can find a way to utilize this formula pattern in your own models. If, you, if this is something that you need to do, um, wishing you all the best on it. And um, if you if you got something out of it, um, please throw the video a like. Always appreciate it. And um, certainly subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV as well. Lots of lots of really um, informative content coming out to you. Okay, all the best.